January Council of Merit is launching Hecker. Uh, great grandson. Great, great. Great, great grandson of Frederick Hecker. Uh, he's formerly the honorary council. Uh, I, I succeeded him. Uh, we have Dr. Johannes Fechner uh, from the Bundestag. Uh, we have Dr. Steve Rowan from the University of Missouri St. Louis, who's a the Hecker scholar. Uh, he's translated and written a number of books on, on Frederick Hecker and the, and the Revolution of 1848. Uh, so at this point, uh, I'd like to thank you very much for the for, uh, uh, for the Civil Civil War uh, reenactors who have shown up. Uh, and they'll speak a little bit about what they do later. Right now, I'd like to. So thank you all. Uh, it's a great honor for me to be here to commemorate a really uh, great man who stood for peace, justice and democracy his entire life, Friedrich Hecker. Friedrich Hecker had its roots in the most southern part of Germany, in South Baden. That's uh, the region I represent nowadays in the uh, German Bundestag, our federal uh, government. And during his time as uh, an MP in the first German parliament during the early 80, uh, 1840s, Hecker stood up for the abolition of the monarchy and the introduction of democracy, but also for welfare issues such as fight against uh, Femine, which was raging in Germany at the time. And another important goal for him was the unification of our country of Germany. Disappointed by the lack of action following all of these parliamentary speeches, Hecker assembled re revolutionary democrats around him to overturn the monarchy establish freedom and democracy as the new form of government in Germany. But he wasn't successful and so he immigrated to the United States. He chose Summerfield as his place of residence since there already were quite a few German immigrants living here at that time, as you can see on the names of the graves here. And since freedom and democracy were important values to Hecker, he fought as an officer in the US Army in the American Civil War between 1861 and 1864. And in 1862 he became colonel of the 82nd, 82nd Illinois Infantry uh, Regiment. His actions make him a role model for the dedication to peace and freedom and it is therefore no surprise that over 1,000 people joined his funeral on this cemetery in 1881. For us, for us in uh, today's times, Friedrich Hecker is also a role model for the transatlantic friendship between the United States and Germany because it remains important that the German and the American people stay connected through their shared values of freedom and democracy. It's now my great honor to lay down these uh, color to honor a great Democrat, freedom fighter and commendable example for the US-German relations. One color was uh, donated by the Hacker Group from South Baden, from Singen, uh, a group which advocates the memory of Hacker in Germany. And the inscription says, long live freedom. And the other inscription, that's mine, you can read, Einigkeit und Recht und Freiheit. That means unity and justice and freedom in commemoration to a great freedom fighter. I chose these words, Einigkeit und Recht und Freiheit, because those were the values of Friedrich Hecker and there are today uh, the title of the German national anthem. That shows how important those values still are today. And at least I'd like to thank you for joining us here for this uh, celebration. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Rowan for organizing this event with the American Council. Thank you. And it's a great honor to have a grand, grand, grandson, the descendant of Mr. Lansing Hacker. Thank you for being here. It's really a great honor to be here to honor a man uh, like Richard Hacker. Thank you all for coming here. I'd like to introduce Dr. Stephen Rod. It was an extraordinary day. I was sitting in my office at the University of Missouri, St. Louis, when a young man I didn't know walked in and said, we've got a large collection of German materials and we can't read them. And uh, I said, well, what is your name? And he said, Ned Hecker. I said, come in. 
Uh, and uh, the result was that we received at the University at the State Historical Society Research Center at the University of Missouri St. Louis the papers of Friedrich Hecker, a real treasure, uh, containing materials you wouldn't ima you couldn't imagine. And uh, we managed to convince the Missouri Historical Society to transfer two additional boxes of things that the family had donated to them uh, some decades before. It is an absolute a wonderful experience, and the result was that the Bundesarchiv, the German Federal Archive, agreed to copy the entire, finance the copy of the entire collection, uh, so that a one copy of it uh, was placed in uh, Baden-Württemberg uh, and uh, another copy at Copeland. And uh, this has been uh, a magnet for researchers for a long period of time. And it was also a major education to me because I had to read through all of them. Uh, and uh, I'm one of the few people around who read, still reads Deutsche Schrift. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, there are still some things in there that I haven't spent much time uh, uh, copying or translating. Uh, that's for future uh, researchers. And in fact, there's a young man from Yale who is going to be arriving next week and we'll probably and we'll begin working uh, with the Hecker paper. Uh, and, uh, but the important thing to me is that Friedrich Hecker was a man who didn't just talk about doing things; he did them, and he risked his life, even though he was a man with no particular gift as a military leader, uh, who had a short temper, uh, who was difficult to work with, but he still bet his life. And I point out particularly this portrait of Friedrich Hecker as a Civil War colonel with that what we what we call the thousand yard stare of somebody who's actually in combat. Something that very few of us experience. So I might note also that there is a, a marker here for a William Frederick Hecker who was a major in the US Army in World War II. Uh, and there's also indication of uh, of Major William Hecker III, who died in Iraq uh, in 2006. So it isn't like this is, uh, as, uh, uh, it, it occasionally said, the, the past is not just, uh, the past is here with us all the time. Uh, uh, there is no such thing as something which is just the past, the past is now. Uh, and I point out also that Friedrich, the, probably the greatest act of heroism was when the, the, when the St. Louis Germans suddenly unified and organized a series of regiments out of the, out of the federal arsenal in downtown St. Louis. Uh, Friedrich Hecker and his son Arthur crossed the Mississippi in a rowboat at night to volunteer as privates. And what he said was, with, uh, for himself and for his son, we have come to share your fate. That's a magic formulation, not I am going to lead you, it is I am going to share your experience. Uh, and that is exactly what he did. Uh, the, uh, the Germans in St. Louis had already transferred thousands of uh, weapons uh, to uh, Alton, Illinois. Heinrich Bernstein, who had been five years in the Austrian army, uh, uh, was captain leading that uh, boat which went across the Mississippi uh, and uh, transferred those things so that the so that the militias of both Illinois and uh, Indiana would receive weapons. And the fact is that, of course, as a result, the state legislature of uh, Missouri protested loudly because they figured they owned everything that the federal government had in, uh, in Missouri. Uh, they, uh, and uh, the fact is that they, the four regiments which came out of the arsenal arrested the Missouri militia and brought it back to, uh, to the arsenal, uh, even though there was, uh, there was also a street riot that led to many deaths. The fact is, however, that following this, Nathaniel Lyon uh, went out to uh, uh, down the up down to Missouri or up to Missouri uh, to uh, 
to Jefferson City and occupied the state capitol. And Henry Bernstein, who had been a, a, the editor of Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels uh, in Paris, uh, uh, in a journal that he published there, became the ruler uh, the, uh, of Jefferson City uh, for a period of time, using his tactics as both a military man and as a theater impresario uh, to uh, secure his position making his 150 men look like three or 400 uh, by marching them around a lot. Uh, but the fact is that these were desperate times. Now, we often talk about Franz Siegel, who wasn't a particularly good general, but a really good one came out of, the, out of this group, uh, that is Peter Joe Osterhaus, uh, who became one of the major generals under General Sherman in the march to uh, Georgia. Uh, but the fact is, that these were men who bent their lives and, uh, in a situation which did not seem very hopeful. And the result was that they were able to keep Missouri in the Union, even though the state descended into chaos as a result of internal uh, terrorist and guerrilla tactics. But the fact is that Friedrich Hecker, when, the, everything, when, when, the, when times were bad, volunteered and volunteered his son uh, to share in the fate of the Germans of Missouri. Uh, and it seems to, uh, we have a number of things that I'll share when we go to the Huffroy House uh, that people can look at. And I'll be giving away a number of books. So uh, you better be ready to, uh, to scramble. Okay. Uh, Thank you very much, Dr. Hyde. Sure, I appreciate it. I might also say that Hecker revisited Germany later on and remarked that it was a country without uh, a nice country but without a bill of rights <laughs> yeah, well, no. um, thank you very much yeah, sure. uh, at, at this point I'd like to invite the commander uh, forward uh, they're going to provide a little discussion of what they do with their reenactment who they represent and also I believe we're going to have a, an honorary volley yes, sir. Great. Uh, gentlemen welcome sir welcome to our country. Um, I'm Captain Zelensky. I'm from O'Fallon, Illinois. I am the commander of the 17th Missouri Company G, and I'm also dual-hatted today as a member of the Sons of the Union Veterans Camp. We established the Sons of the Union Veterans as an outgrowth of the old Grand Army of the Republic that was founded in 1868, and we were formed shortly thereafter as a GAR camp within the Belleville area. And at that time, the name was decided to go with Colonel Friedrich Hecker as a local um, variety of person here that uh, uh, did great things during the war. Uh, what we do as a reenactment group is the 17th Missouri, like I said, the 17th Missouri Company G. We were actually part of a St. Louis regiment, and our company was actually formed out of the Washington, Missouri area. Uh, we formed up in uh, August of 1861 for three years. Uh, when August of 1864 rolled around, uh, the, company, the regiment was offered the opportunity to become a veteran regiment. They refused. They said we've had enough. Out of 98 members that were in the company, uh, Company G, uh, 33 actually came home. Um, so we did have a little attrition during those three years. But in August of 1864, the regiment came back to St. Louis and was disbanded. Uh, those individuals that decided they wanted to continue on, there was several of them, they were amalgamated into other units and continued the march with Sherman to the sea. Um, mentioned Colonel Osterhaus. Um, he was our commander in the regiment, and he went on to become a general under General Sherman um, and had a, a very uh, nice career. Yes. Uh, so what we're going to do today to pay honor and tribute to, to, first of all, to Colonel Hecker, second of all, to the dignitaries that showed up here, and most importantly to you guys that took the time out in this heat to come out here and do this, um, is to, uh, we'll fire a three-volley uh, uh, ceremony. And uh, what we want you to do at the time is not only pay uh, tribute to those three volleys, but also watch what the guys have to do to go through um, when it comes to loading these muzzle loader weapons. And as you're watching that, try to put yourself back in that time frame where you were in the line of the men or you were commanding those men and to see how your thought process would have to go in terms of how to fight battles based upon the, the rapidity and 
Uh, a good a good infantryman without under duress could maybe get three rounds a minute off. Under duress, he might get two rounds a minute off. We didn't hit crap. Uh, the guys, the, the old saying goes that you almost had to shoot the amount, same amount that you weigh in lead before you hit somebody. So that's very true. So with that in mind, uh, what I'll do is I'll go back down and we'll get the guys. I'm going to bring it to attention. We're going to load. And then if I can clear a path behind us, we're going to do an about face for safety reasons. We'll fire three volleys. And then on the end of the third volley, I'll do an about face. We'll go to present arms. And uh, that's when we'll have taps in place. So that's kind of the program that we're going to do from this point on. Marty, Marty, there's people back there. I think I'd prefer to have them back there. That way. Afterwards, for a picture. Yeah, we can do that for a picture, yeah. But that, for safety purposes, I'd like to have them back there. Catch a detail. Load. Now what they're doing is when we te when you teach troops how to do it, if you do it, what we call load a nine. There's nine distinct steps that you have to do to load your weapon. And when you're out, of course, in the battle, you don't go through the, that kind of process other than you're going through the steps. Detail about hey colors two step forward detail firing at high elevation ready hey fire reload. Detail. Ready. Aim. Fire. Reload. Detail. Ready. Aim. Arms. Recover. Arms. Shoulder. Arms. About. Hey. Colors back in line. Together. Detail. Present. Arms.
Shoulder. Hands. Shoulder. Hands. Parade. Rest. Thank you very much. Very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Trumpeter. At this time, I'd like to express the appreciation of the Federal Republic of Germany, uh, the German Foreign Ministry, the Bundestag, uh, for everybody's uh, uh, visit and uh, being here today. Uh, we will be going to uh, the Hofbrau House uh, for a cold beer, which is desperately needed at this point, and, uh, uh, and lunch, if you'd be so inclined. So, feel free to join us. Thank you so much. Well, yeah. 